Hey, it's us. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Okay. Great. It's What Does This Button Do? Episode number 233. And today is really the 24th, but <laughs> we're kind of out of sorts because of travel. And that's okay with me. <laughs> that's the jet lag date. <laughs> <laughs> We're not quite here, <clears throat> but we are an educational show about smartphones and technology with us geeks on tour. And do you think your smartphone is smarter than you? And do you have questions about your Apple phone, your Android tablet? And how do you learn about these wonderful things? Well, we have this YouTube show and we want you to click the bell and subscribe. And that way you'll get all of the notifications of when we go live. And it really helps if you subscribe and like us on Facebook. And we have a quick tip that we always start with. Yeah, we like to jump right in and then we'll back, back. back then we'll back off and chat a little bit. But our show today is about internet connections internationally. And this quick tip is related, not exactly, but related about using airplane mode to improve your signal. This is Chris Gould with Geeks on Tour, and in this quick tip video, I want to show you how you can improve your cell phone's reception using airplane mode. Have you noticed that your phone calls are having poor connect connections, or when you're using your apps or browsing the web, it's getting slow? This might help. So here is my iPhone, and if you look real closely, you'll see that it has three bars out of a possible four. And here is my Samsung, and it has four bars out of a possible five. <clears throat> so I'm going to turn on airplane mode. On this iPhone, I swipe up from the bottom to get to the control center, and there is airplane mode. If you have a newer iPhone, you will need to swipe down from the top right to get that. So now, instead of any bars at all, it has a little airplane. On Samsung, I swipe down from the top, and there is airplane mode. Now, what has that done? Turning on airplane mode turns off all the radios. All connectivity is off. So you cannot make or receive phone calls. You can't send or receive text messages. And you certainly can't use any feature that requires an internet connection. There's no data. There's no voice. <clears throat> there's no text when you are in airplane mode. Now, when I turn airplane mode off and the radios come back on, that's kind of like rebooting your connectivity. So I swipe up turn airplane mode off. It is searching for the cell towers and it didn't make any difference on this one. I mean, I'm at home now. I have pretty good connectivity. And turn this one off. And same thing. It didn't make a difference for me, but that's because mine were... Oh, it, it did. On the Samsung, I do now have the five, five full bars on the Samsung. That's how you reboot your cellular connection without rebooting the whole phone and get a better connection. It almost always improves. Oh, looky. <laughs> I now have four bars on the iPhone. So it just, it just took a minute. Turning on airplane mode and then turning it back off will almost always improve your signal. 
Okay. And yet while we're home, we don't need to do that much. We have great Wi-Fi in, in the house from our cable provider. Right. And I <clears> even <throat> connect to our modem directly with the Ethernet cable. That way I have a hardwired cable to the computer. computer. Yeah. But Wi-Fi in the house. And then we have all these smart devices around. And it's a but lot when fun. we're traveling, I often use that technique. Mm -hmm. I often do say, gee, this this isn't connecting it's very well. It's not working you as know, well like, as it should. Like we're traveling down the road and your phone connects to a cell tower. Well, after a while, it will realize that that cell tower is a ways away and it'll see if there's another one closer. But sometimes that takes a while. This forces it to find the nearest cell tower and get a better connection. Well, that's great. <clears throat> it's true, too, that that's what we do. And, you know, I'm Jim. And here <laughs> together with my wife, Chris, we are Geeks on Tour. And we really love teaching this stuff. She is a great teacher. And I like playing with the technology. He's so, the producer. So we put this show together and we enjoy having you along. If you can, give us a like, give us a thumbs up, do all of those things you're supposed to do. And Chris, where have we been? Well, we are Geeks Who Teach and all of our content is collected on our website at geeksontour.com. Make sure to check that out. We just got back home just a couple of days ago from a trip to the Indian Ocean, a, a country called the Maldives, which is a collection of little islands. And we went scuba diving with manta rays. Oh. <laughs> hard, hard to describe. They were so close. These creatures, that, that wingspan is 10 feet, maybe, yeah. More. Yeah. maybe more, but at least at least 10 feet, and they got almost within touching distance. So I took this video myself. <laughs> I'm very proud of this piece. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I'm in here. Where was I? I don't have you in there. <laughs> well, <laughs> that photo there was taken from your video. That's so right. you had me in there somewhere. Oh, yeah. I didn't want to play the whole thing. That, that's, that's it me. It is available on my YouTube channel. And a manta ray. Yeah. And, oh. Cool stuff. That was so awesome. Right on. So. <clears throat> but. Yeah, How we're did back we home. get connected when we were there? Oh That's God. why we we're teaching this topic today is because of using international data plans in the Maldives. And we're only home for a week before we are traveling to Italy next month. And we're going to be there the whole month. So yeah. we, we learned a few new things that we are going to implement for traveling to Italy. Yeah. Thanks. It's cool. I guess we can get into this thing. I want to thank all of our premium members, especially you guys make this possible for us, even that travel. <laughs> you help make that travel possible. But our work here is supported by our premium members. And you can become a premium member to support us at geeksontour.com slash join now. There are a lot of benefits involved, and we'll tell you about some of those a little later on. One of the benefits is the backstage pass, and that's right after this show. And we have a Zoom meeting where our premium members can come in with a link that Chris sent out either this morning or it's on our website at the member login page. You can get it right there. We'd love to have you after the show. Come in, ask your questions, just hang out, have a glass of wine or something with us, and we'll enjoy it. Okay, you ready? Well, where was the say hello to our I live? Did. It was back here. Oh, well, there's lots of people have said uh -oh. said a few things. Well, then I better get going here. Huh? <laughs> All right. 
Oh, Betsy's here. Hi, Betsy. Okay. Yeah, I got your email. Haven't had a chance to respond yet. <laughs> uh, well, we never know what day it is. And and Detlef, you probably have some things to teach us about international cell I'm brands. I'm sure he does. Without Wi-Fi, I have no phone service. That's true. So we'll talk about that, Hi, too. And Bill and Karen, I hope you... Uh, since you had some good Wi-Fi connections in the Maldives, would using airplane mode with Wi-Fi have provided better connection than cell towers? Uh, it would have made sure that we were connected to the best cell tower, but since the cell towers were on the individual islands, it was pretty easy for the phones to figure out. So that we did not use that airplane mode technique in the Maldives. Okay, Linda's here. Good to see you. Maldives is a dream trip. Indeed yeah, it was. And, you, you know, go soon because... It's, um, uh, yeah. I use a GoPro underwater camera in a housing. That's... Uh, music of the video, drain out ah, the commentary. Well, that's, okay. Yeah, too bad. Well, we shouldn't have been talking. We shouldn't have been talking. On. There is no commentary, <laughs> really. We were just chatting behind, and we didn't. I could have turned that down. I'll, I'll, I'll do it for the. No, we'll worry about it later. Sorry. Okay, live viewers, thank you. Did that backstage pass? Now you have to go to work. Okay, so this is our topic for today is cellular phone and data for international travelers. And because we just went to the Maldives. And so what we're going to do today is teach the issues that are involved with using smartphones while traveling internationally. We're going to start with what is a data plan. You know, we pride ourselves on being understandable by beginners. So we're going to start at the beginning, but then we'll tell you our experiences with Verizon, AT&T, T-Mobile, and Google Fi. And lastly, we'll tell you our favorites. You're going to have to wait till the end. Do you feel the suspense? <laughs> yeah, just To find kidding. our favorites. No, you don't. You don't. She doesn't do it. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'll tell you our favorite right now, and then we'll back up and get into the program. Google Fi is amazing the way it has a plan that works internationally. And the web, to check it out, you go to fi.google.com. And why do we think it's so great? Because it just works the same no matter where we are. There is no special... Uh, setting that you have to change before you leave home. It just works. And it works the same. It's high speed. You get the full speed of whatever cell tower is nearby. There are no extra fees, nothing to set up before you go. Now, we did learn, though, that we need to change our plan. The plan that we have been using on Google Fi has always been just a pay-as-you-go, $10 per gigabyte, period. $10 per gigabyte used while you're using internet. We used 14 gigabytes while we were in the Maldives. Now, that's a little bit high. Most people won't use that. We took a lot of pictures, and we uploaded them to Google Photos consistently while we were there, and he did a lot of video and he uploaded a little bit of video. So we used 14 gigabytes, $10 per gigabyte. That means $140 that we spent to be online in the Maldives. That's too much for 10 days. So we've learned that they have a new unlimited plan called Unlimited Plus which is $110 for two lines, 55 each, and 50 gigabytes. That includes 50 gigabytes of high-speed data each. That's just a no-brainer for our month, next month in Italy. So for $110, we will have 100 gigabytes of high-speed, whatever high-speed is available, 
data. And you can change your plans. The way Google Fi works, there's no contract. You, you can change plans month to month. So that's what we're using. And it's pretty amazing. So what is a data plan and why do you need one? So now we're on to the program. Let's start learning. And we have a pre-recorded piece about this. What this is, is Chris Gold plan? with Geeks on Tour? And in this tutorial video, I want to talk about some basic terminology that every smartphone user should understand. It's data plan. What is a data plan and why do you need one? First, I'm going to go over just some of the concepts and other terminology, and then I'll give a little demo both on iPhone and on Android. So the point in having a data plan is to connect your cell phone to the internet, also known as the cloud, so that data can go back and forth between the two. What do I mean by data? Well, it's things like email or Google Maps, asking directions, searching for intro, for info, sharing photos. And that's going from the phone to the internet. From the internet back to the phone is where you're receiving mail or getting directions, browsing websites, or looking at Facebook. Today's cell phones are smartphones. What makes them smart? A connection to the internet. Data is sent and received over that connection. If you only need voice calling or texting, you don't even need a data plan. But then it's not a smartphone, it's just a phone. So there's two ways to make this connection. One is using Wi-Fi. To use Wi-Fi, you must be able to connect to a nearby Wi-Fi hotspot also known as wireless network. Or you can use a cellular connection. To do that, you must have purchased a data plan from a cellular provider like Verizon, T-Mobile, etc. This is also known as a mobile data plan or a mobile network. Let me, let me demonstrate. I'm going to start with an iPhone and then I'm going to also use an Android. So here's my iPhone and I have turned off both Wi-Fi and cellular in order to make this point. So if I go to my email now and I can usually pull down to receive new emails, it's telling me no connection. So it can't do it. I could also go to Google and search for something like hotels in the Maldives. No network connection. It won't work. Facebook. If you're using Facebook, you need an internet connection, a data connection, or maps. It's no internet connection. Okay, so what do I do? I need either Wi-Fi connection or a cellular connection. Let me go into my settings and I'm going to turn on Wi-Fi. Now, this would be if you're traveling, your hotel might have a Wi-Fi hotspot. I happen to be home, so I will connect to my home Wi-Fi, which is Geeks PW2. And since I've connected to it before, it just automatically connects. If you're somewhere unfamiliar, you will need to know the name of the network that your hotel has or or whatever. Now I am connected to Wi-Fi and I can see that by those little radio waves up in the top notification bar. Now if I go to Maps and try again to search for Naples, Italy, there we go. It works. And same with Facebook. Facebook now works. All right. I'm going to turn Wi-Fi back off now just to make a point. Now let's say that you're at a place where there is no Wi-Fi hotspot. You're in a car and you want to get directions to somewhere. That's where you're going to need a cellular data connection. On my phone, I go to settings and mobile data and turn it on. Now I can go to maps and in Naples, Italy, search for, you know, hotels. And it's 
going to work because I have an internet connection, a data connection using the data plan from my cellular provider. Now let's do that same thing on an Android phone. So here's my Android phone and I have also turned off both cellular and Wi-Fi. If I try to search for something, it will say can't do it. Mobile data is off, no data connections. Consider turning on mobile data or turning on Wi-Fi. Okay, I can turn on Wi-Fi. I go into settings, connections, turn on Wi-Fi and then you have the tap on it because just turning it on isn't enough. You need to select a wireless network to connect to. I happen to be home, so it connects to my home network automatically. Now I can search for something and everything works. I turn Wi-Fi back off. I'm using the shortcut to do it that this time and nothing will work. Now let's say that I'm out on the street and I need to call an Uber. There's no way there's a Wi-Fi to connect to, so I need to turn on my cellular data. I go into my settings, connections, and data usage, and mobile data. Notice it is off. When I turn it on, things will now be able to work and I can call an Uber. Good stuff. So that is why you need a data plan from a cellular provider because you need a connection to the internet and when there is no Wi-Fi available, the cellular connection will make it work. Okay. Okay. All that was basically about terminology. If you want to do internet related stuff, you need a data connection. You get it either with Wi Fi or with cellular. So if you don't have Wi Fi, then you need a data plan. So what do you need for a data plan to work? So first, you need to have a data plan, meaning you're paying a cellular provider for that ability to connect to the internet. How do you connect? You have to be within range of a cell tower, like the one pictured here. And that cell tower must be one that is used by your cellular provider. So we've done this many times. We've been driving down the highway and we see a cell tower. Oh boy, we're gonna have good internet now. But I look at my phone and I only have one or two bars. What's that mean? That tower is not, <laughs> that is not on your plan. Yeah, that tower Probably. is not used <clears throat> by your cell provider. So, and maybe, you need to have your phone's roaming setting on. So when you're traveling internationally, you probably don't have any cell towers that are native to your cell service. So you have to turn roaming on to allow it to connect to other cell towers. Yeah, your home network will be sharing somebody else's network. Like over there, we had, what was the name of that Uridu -ru -ru <laughs> was the name of the network in, in the Maldives. But even in the United States, there are places where, where like, if you have Verizon. Kentucky. Kentucky, right. <laughs> Kentucky doesn't have any native, or at least when we were there, yeah, it didn't have any native Verizon towers. But when we turned on roaming, we were able to get 4G. Because... Verizon had an agreement with a local cellular company and used their cell towers, but you had to have the roaming setting on. Um, cell towers in the Maldives. This was interesting. I mean, we really, we were prepared to be completely offline for the 10 days that we were on the boat. We didn't know. I mean, we're in the middle of the Indian Ocean. Really, the near to the equator, just three degrees above the equator. But there were all these islands 
And they have these resorts and a lot of people pay a lot of money to go to those resorts and they expect to have the internet. So they all had towers on them and we're like going, yeah. <laughs> and we were on the internet because we're geeks. But the funny thing. Some people it, would it, like to be away from all of that yeah, stuff. Yeah. But I was, us. you know, I was okay with being offline for a week, but no, I was no. glad that we didn't have to be. But the <laughs> funny thing. If you've ever been on a boat much, you know that when a boat is at anchor, the boat swings back yeah. and forth and back and forth. And this was a steel boat. It was a good sized steel boat that we were on this whole time. So it could block the signal. And if the tower was out the window, good cell signal. If the tower was on the other side. <laughs> so we're if we're in the room for an hour, you know, there'd be 20 minutes where we'd have really good internet connection. And then it swung away <laughs> and we had no internet connection. And then you just have to wait until it swung back again. <laughs> so <clears throat> the cell tower is what your device needs to be able to connect to. Okay. Okay. So that's just all the basic concepts. Now let's talk about the major cellular providers in the US. So Verizon, and I have, if you've been watching us any length of time, you know that I have two phones. I have one Android phone and it is on the Verizon service. And then I have an iPhone and it is on the Google Fi service. So my Verizon phone, when we landed in, when the plane landed, I got a text message from them when it landed in Dubai, we had a long layover in Dubai. I got that message that's at the top right there. A Verizon message. Welcome to the United Arab Emirates. You have travel pass. So that's something I had to turn on on our plan before we left. You, you just have to turn it on once and then it's on forever. You have travel pass, which lets you use your domestic plan for $10 a day while you're away. Pay only on the days you use your mobile service, use talk, text, or data. High-speed data is up to a half a gigabyte a day. That's going to last me <laughs> about an hour. <laughs> Need help? Visit vzw.com, international travel. Okay, then when we landed in the Maldives... It said cellular data is not available. So if Verizon had been our only service, we would not have been able to connect to the internet at all while we were in the Maldives. So how does Verizon work for international? You need to have the travel pass. You will be charged $10 a day for any day you use your phone. Now, if you say, I'm not going to do that, then you should put it into airplane mode or turn off mobile data so that you don't accidentally incur that $10 charge. If you do pay the $10, you get a half a gigabyte of high-speed data. If you want more, you have to pay another $10 for another half a gigabyte. And where can you use it? 185 countries. And how do you find out what those countries are? If you go to the Verizon, v, what was that? VZW.com, INTL Travel. So let me do that. VZW.com, INTLTRVL. And here is all the information you need to know. With a travel pass, you get 185 countries. And what are they? <clears throat> I think down here somewhere. Uh, uh, you, you, you get the list. Here, plan your trip. Hmm. And 
at an international plan while outside the U.S. Somewhere in here, there is actually a list of all the countries. I'll just search for international coverage. There we go. And... So what countries are available? Where can I find out? There's network coverage, international coverage map. I'll get here. Take your time. <laughs> and this is where you will be able to see that the Maldives is not one of the covered countries. But you, if, but Italy, for example, is. So that's Verizon. It's, I, it's not a great option when it comes to international. T-Mobile is better. So here is T-Mobile's big claim on their website in talking about international. With our plans, you get unlimited texting and data and 210 countries and destinations. No international data roaming charges, no setup, it just works. And that's true. There was somebody else on the boat that had T-Mobile and they just whipped out their phone and went to a website, no problem. But here's the fine print. Standard speeds, 128 KBPS. Yeah, that's not too much. That is so slow. Yeah, it could be faster, but that's what they say in the small print. Yeah. So T-Mobile is definitely one of the better options for international travel. It has roaming agreements with lots of cellular companies in lots of countries, including Maldives. It did work in the Maldives. But... Don't expect the same speeds that you get here in the States. And it says not for extended international use. We'll talk about that in a bit. Third option. Third of the major cellular providers in the U.S., AT&T. They have changed their plans not in the not too recent, not too distant past. And... <laughs> They've gotten pretty good. AT&T is a pretty good option for international now. But it's not available in the Maldives. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't work for us. You though. know, once again, you got to go to their website and find the list of the countries that it's available in. If you're the country that you're going to is on the list, then you're you're good. You still need to use these day passes, just like the Verizon. You have to make sure that your plan includes the day passes. But it does not appear, we don't have an AT&T plan of anything. So, not anymore, no. Yeah, so we did not have this to play with. But in reading through their website, it does not appear that you're limited to the half gigabyte like Verizon. You are limited to whatever your plan is in the U.S. If in the U.S. you get 20 gigabytes of high-speed data per month, then when you're traveling, you get 20 gigabytes of high-speed data per, per month. It's $10 a day, but they cap it after 10 days. If you've paid $10 a day for 10 days, the rest of the month, you can use your data internationally at no further charge. That's pretty good. A hundred bucks for a month of data service in, in a foreign country. That's really not that at all. So AT&T is okay. But, all right, here we go. This one is the best. And you may have never heard of it. That's the thing. Because it's not really a primary cellular provider. No, they're a MVNO. MVNO. 
mobile virtual network operator, meaning virtual. They don't act. Google does not actually have any cell towers of their own. No, they share or they have agreements with other providers to use their systems. One of those is T-Mobile. That's why we get the international, at least on my phone. And it and works. I can share it. You can share. Oh, that's that's the in in red here. So it's truly international. Even Maldives, it was over two hundred and ten countries. It's still not absolutely everywhere. You would need to look at the list. It's certainly been in most of the places where we've been. It's been every place we've been. Yeah. And as soon as the plane lands, your phone just starts looking around for a cell tower and it connects. So these little screenshots here. Yeah. The the top one was in the Maldives. And notice it doesn't say Google Fi in the status bar. It says Uridu. Uridu. <laughs> and that was the main cellular provider in the Maldives. So it was almost as if I had a contract with Uridu, but I didn't. I have Google Fi and it connected to Uridu. And the bottom screenshot there is when we went to Australia and my iPhone with the Google Fi service just automatically connected to Vodafone in, in Australia. The thing that, no, nope, well, wasn't done. <laughs> sounded that, like you were done. Well, that red bullet, you <laughs> talked about this. Oh, uh, okay. The hotspot part of it is that I could share my cellular data with my computer. And that came in really handy. And Chris could connect to it with her Chromebook that she had carried along and with her other phone. So she had connectivity using Wi-Fi from my phone cellular service. The boat had a Wi-Fi connection also. They had basically a Wi-Fi hotspot that connected to a cellular tower, Uridu probably, I expect, and they shared that, but they charged for it. They char and a few of the people on the boat took advantage of that. It worked out pretty good for them. Same deal as ours, though. But the boat's Wi-Fi was only available in the main salon, not in your rooms. That's right. So you had to be near the main salon or at least maybe on that back deck. So, yeah. So I don't think any of the other services allow you to turn your phone into a hotspot when you're roaming internationally. Yeah, we were special. But even, even Google Fi only does that for on Android phones. So my iPhone could not be a hotspot. Too bad. <laughs> now, and their new unlimited plan. Uh, this, we, we're going to have to check this out and we'll tell you about it later. I'm excited. Yeah. For, for the, You've had Google Fi since 2015, I think. Yeah, I was an original charter member of the Fi world because of my our, our association Google with stuff. Google stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. But it's always been $10 per gigabyte. And that gets expensive if we use a lot of gigabytes. It's great for when we're home and we're almost always connected to Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. So we don't use many gigabytes on the cellular. You see this question here. Can you say something about Spectrum? Did you look into Spectrum at nope. all? No. No. Okay. Spectrum's another MVNO and they uh, give you internet. They call it a landline. It's actually voice over IP and you get mobile for 14 a gig and U.S. she really uses more than one. Well, I can do that. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't know what the you know landline and spectrum things like spectrum provide, but I'd be surprised. I think it's if a lot they like, work internationally, right? Uh, probably not. It's much like what we have here in our townhouse with our hot wire, right? It and, works great in the house. And it but, gives, yeah, it gives all of those those things. You get 
you get TV, you get landline if you want it. I don't, we don't use it, and we get high speed internet. So that's that's what we do here. But that doesn't really help us outside of around here. We have to have some other internet connection, right? All right, and she has one more question there. And what if you only need one phi line, not two? Then it's fifty five. Then it's then it's sixty dollars or sixty five. I'm not sure. You'd have to look it up. Yeah. But yeah, you can get just one line, but it's it's a little bit more expensive for right. one line than the line price if you have two. Yeah. And if you have three or four, the the per line price goes down. Right. And I'm thinking about putting my son or he's asked, you know, that we might put him on ours because he hardly uses any and he uses Wi-Fi a lot at, where, where at his place. So it's, it's not a big deal. At he, three lines, it would go down to $45 per line. Not bad. Check it okay. out. Can a Canadian use US data plan? Now <laughs> this is, I think, I think Ron Ron's is here. I think Ron is he here. And he mentioned, make sure to tell people that Google Fi is for U.S. residents only. He uh, lived in, he was a snowbird. So he was half time in the U.S. and half time in Canada. Now he's been in Canada full time and he got this notice from Google Fi. Fi's terms of service requires you to use our service primarily in the United States. And it looks like you've been predominantly outside of the U.S. So we are cutting you off. Yes, that is true. The thing, some people will say, oh, well, but I've been out of the country for, you know, years. It's when they choose to enforce this rule. They've always had this rule, but they enforce it irregularly. T-Mobile also has the same rule. Notice in T-Mobile's fine print, not for extended international use. You must reside in the U.S. and primary usage must be in the U.S. or will cut you off if they feel like it. <laughs> you know, maybe they will and maybe they won't. Okay. All right. SIM cards. What is a SIM card? Well, I have a little pile of them here <laughs> from times that we went uh, abroad years ago. I mean, it used to be that when you went to a foreign country and you wanted to use your phone connected, you had to buy a service from a cellular provider in that country. Uh, you know, not so much anymore because we have all these great roaming Go back to the slide so I know what I'm supposed to say. <laughs> so what does SIM stand for? Subscriber Identity Module. This little card, this little bitty thing here goes inside your phone and that is what tells it what cell towers to connect to, who you are, who you are paying for your connection. And when we, in the airport, in the Maldives, here's the store for Uridu. We could have paid, we could have bought a SIM card from Uridu. That's only like three or $4 and then paid $35 for 17 gigabytes. Then we'd have to put it into the phone, change a couple of settings. It would have been cheaper than using our Google Fi, but it's a hassle. <laughs> I'm all for easy, but let me, let me just show you how we doing. I'm okay. Um, yeah, I'm not going to play the video. I'm going to demonstrate. So here is a f my old iPhone. So check this out. My old iPhone has no SIM. That means it is not affiliated with any cellular provider. I cannot get regular, this, this phone, this phone does not have a phone number. The SIM card gives it a phone number, but it can connect to Wi-Fi. So, but as soon as I walk out of the house and I'm away from the Wi-Fi, it won't work unless I have a SIM card. So if I get this SIM card, what you have to do is find where the little 
there's a there's a little tray and you find this it's a little hole this is a sim card removal tool i poke in that hole and it releases the tray you put the sim card in that tray and then put it back in then there's a few settings you need you need to set and once it's in you now have if i put an uredu SIM card in there, I would have then had a Maldives phone number. So it makes it a Maldives phone. So that's what SIM cards do. Okay. There's this one. So can my phone use two? What if I like using Verizon when I'm in the United States. It's the best coverage nationwide. But when I travel, I want to be able to use Google Fi. Can my phone use two SIM cards? Maybe yes and maybe no. <laughs> it depends on the phone. iPhone, the current crop of iPhones are yes. You can put in one physical SIM card and then one eSIM in, in, in electronic. Well, anyway, yeah, electronic SIM. Androids, there are some Androids that allow you to put two physical SIMs in. And if you have two SIM cards in your phone, you can choose which one to use. So when you're in the United States, you'd use the Verizon. When you're in Europe, you use the Google Fi. Pretty cool. To install an eSIM, there's just a sample there. If we were going to the UK, we might get a UK eSIM. You, you pay some money, you get this card with a QR code. And you just open your phone to the place where you add a cellular provider, scan the QR code, and you're, and you're good to go. Lots to learn. Ron says, don't change SIMs if you have two-factor authentication set up as security. Ah, good point. Yeah, you good need point. to have because that's set up. Because that changes your phone number. Right. Unless. Now, that's that's someday we'll do a whole other show on Google Voice. I mean, you know that I have two phones, but they both ring on the same Google Voice phone number. So that that would be a way around. If you change the eSIM, just add it to your Google Voice lines. Okay. So Max Tub 2 wants a Fi SIM card. How to get it? Oh, we should give them a don't a we get we get some kind of credit if we give them Yeah, there's there's some kind of special thing that let me see if I can find that link. Yeah. Well, but the basic answer is you go to fi.google.com and, you know, you'll find the instructions there. But but yes, if you follow a link that we can give you, we get $20 and, and they get and $20, they get $20 right? Yeah. We can. Something like that. We'll we'll figure that out and put the link in the in the notes below the YouTube video. OK. Let's see. More to learn. Lots more to learn. And there is no way we could be experts on <laughs> all of this. Our goal today was just to give you our, our experience. But if you want to learn more, for example, about dual SIMs, we highly recommend our friends at Mobile Internet Resource Center. And let me just show you this. So if you go to Mobile Internet Resource Center, you can just Google for it, Mobile Internet Resource Center, and you will get to this website, our friends, Chris and Cherie. And it's a huge website, but you can use search. Search is covered up there by my, by my face. Well, here. There we go. Okay. If you click on search and then type dual sims, <clears throat> Just for example, you can search for anything. This is a huge website full of all sorts of great information. But I watched this little video, two networks, one pocket. 
Carriers are finally starting to provision smartphone eSIMs. If you click on that, you can read the article, but I really like watching videos. If you watch this video, then you will see Chris showing you exactly what is meant by having one physical SIM and one eSIM and how you can switch amongst them. So that's just a little plug for our friends at Mobile Internet Resource Center for more information on mobile devices, cellular data plans, all things about connecting to the internet away from home. <laughs> Joe says, I Googled what five <laughs> names and <laughs> responded, forget it. Forget about <laughs> it. That's funny. <laughs> Can I buy a Google SIM card and use it for one month only while, while I'm overseas? That's a good question. You can change your plan from month to month and you can put it on vacation for up to three months. Can you actually cancel it? Use it for one month and cancel it? I, I don't know. And then reactivate it. Hmm. Probably, but I know that you can put it on vacation for up to three months and if you're on the plan where you just pay the $10 per gigabyte and you don't use it, then it's just the base $20 for voice and text. Right. Something like that. Anyway, they kind of you know, pre-charge or pay those. Okay. I think. Let's see. Yeah. Any other questions? I think we've gotten them all. Oh, here, uh, if you have two SIM cards, how do you choose which one is active? It's in the settings in your phone's mobile network settings. You'll be able to choose. And from watching that video at Mobile Internet Resource Center, they said that you can even specify if you get a call from this person, use this network. If you get a call from that person, use that network. Wow. So you can have one. Sounds complicated. One for work and one for personal. Yeah. Very cool. All right. Well, did you learn something? <laughs> the geek's favorite cell service for international travel is Google Fi. The website address is fi.google.com true or false all major u.s cellular providers will work anywhere else in the world false yeah. <laughs> not anywhere you know check you it out to, you have to check out their website right and find the list of countries they work in so check all services that need data either wi-fi or cellular does email need it email needs data texting no, texting is a is a voice service. Okay, but uh, messaging does. Well, yeah, a, a, a true text message does, does not. not use data. He uses the Most cell. of us these the days, cell. though, use like Facebook Messenger or WhatsApp. Those use data, those messaging services. Okay, Google Maps. Needs data. Web browsing. Needs data. Sharing photos. Needs data. And that's really... Amazing. <laughs> so we're tied to the data these days. Here's what I found. Wow. Which cellular providers allow roaming in international locations with no extra charge? Is it A, Verizon, B, T Mobile, C, A, T, N, T, or D, Google Fi? B, T Mobile, and D, Google Fi, allows roaming with no extra charges. Which cellular providers allow high-speed data roaming in international locations with no extra charge? Only Google Fi. So not Verizon, not T-Mobile, or AT&T. Only Google Fi, high-speed. And true or false, is it possible to have one phone with both Verizon service and Google Fi. It's possible. Or you another. need two SIMs. Usually it works with one physical SIM and one eSIM in a phone that can handle that. All right. So for our premium members, we have the Backstage Pass. It's a wonderful benefit of premium membership. 
It's a Zoom meeting, right? in a few minutes and get the link from the email that Chris sent out earlier, or it's on our website at Geeks on Tour. Check for the member login menu item. Our newsletter comes out once a month. Sign up. It's free. We promise not to abuse your email address, and it's a good thing to do. We really like getting people information with the newsletter. You can find out what we're doing, where we're being, and all that kind of stuff. So sign up there. Members get the 2021 edition of the Learn Google Photos book. Do all that. Subscribe to this channel. Like us on Facebook. Do all of those things that you know help us out. So, Chris, what's the webpage that lists all of our YouTube shows? The webpage is geeksontour.com. The menu item is YouTube show. You will see a listing of all 233 episodes right Including there. Including this one, right. And the webpage lists all of our recent newsletters. Geeksontour.com. The menu item is blogs and news. You'll find all our newsletters for, what? Forever. 15 years <laughs> listed seems. there. And why do people pay $58 a year to join Geeks on Tour? The member benefits include asking us questions on our Q&A page. Backstage pass, which we are about to do, where you get to have exclusive members only get togethers, access to hundreds of show me videos, all of our ebooks, including the Learn Google Photos, written notes from these YouTube shows. And some people join our membership just to say thank you for all the stuff we give for free. And we thank you. If you go on a month vacation in Europe and the dates span two months, do you get charged for one or two months? Well, you'll probably get charged for two months, but only the data that you use. It but it would depend on when your plan started. Right, right. You know, if 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 you... if It, it, yeah. it might not depends start at the beginning of the start. month. Right. Check with your service. Don't, don't rely on that. So become a member, geeksontour.com. Join now. See us in the backstage pass. That's it for us. I'm Jim. I'm Chris. And we're Geeks on Tour. See Happy you. traveling. You're right. The world is opening up again. It certainly seems and like And next month, we might be doing one of these shows from Tuscany. Yeah, wouldn't that be fun? See you next time. And that's it for us.